Hi, my name is Danny Seam, and in this video, I'm going to discuss why I only invest in A and B class properties and avoid C and D class properties. So with that being said, let's get started. In case you don't know what property classes are, let's quickly get that out of the way. A property class is a simple and effective way to quickly describe the quality of an investment property. A class properties being the best, followed by B class properties, C class properties, and finally D class properties being the worst of them just like school grades. As an example, A-class properties are homes in great condition, in great neighborhoods with the best schools. They are almost always more expensive than any other classes of properties too. A D-class property, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. They are typically homes in poor condition, in bad neighborhoods with poor school systems and the cheapest to buy. Do keep in mind, this is all relative and location dependent, state to state and city to city. An A-class property outside of Memphis, Tennessee could cost $400,000 but an A-class property of the same quality outside of San Francisco could cost millions more. So even though they cost drastically different, they can still both be A-class property types. The same goes for B, C, and D-classes. That being said, investors from all over the country and across the world invest in all property types. Some invest solely in C-class properties, some in D-class, others like me in A and B-class properties. There is no right or wrong property class to invest in. However, the different classes come with inherent risk and rewards. So for question one, what are the positives and negatives that come with investing in these different classes of properties? And why do I only invest in A and B class properties? Let's get right to it. The positives of investing in A and B class properties include attracting better tenants with great credit who can produce above average incomes that can afford and are more willing to pay higher rent prices. They are more likely to take better care of your property and pay the rent on time as well. Now that isn't always a given, but the odds are more in your favor compared to lower class property types. A and B class properties are also in low crime areas and appreciate at much higher rates than C and D class properties. The only real downsides are monetary. A class properties are the most expensive of the bunch. They cost more to buy, require higher down payments, and will have higher mortgages. Because of these factors, A class properties typically produce the lowest cash flow since they don't demand enough in rent to offset the higher acquisition costs. On the flip side, the negatives associated with D class properties typically equate to attracting low quality tenants, with poor credit and below average incomes. They are more likely to miss rent payments, pay late, get evicted, and take less care of your property compared to tenants who go for other property classes. Please understand that this doesn't mean you can't find a good tenant for a D-class property, but the pool of quality tenants you have to choose from is limited. C and D-class properties also appreciate at much lower rates than A and B-class properties and are in high income areas. You might get lucky and buy in an area that eventually experiences gentrification, but I wouldn't count on it. The positives of investing in D-class properties are all monetary. D-class properties are almost always the cheapest to buy. They require the lowest down payments and demand higher rent compared to how much they cost to buy. Because of these factors, D-class properties typically produce the highest cash flows of all property classes. So what do most investors typically invest in? Well, most investors, especially ones you see on YouTube and communities like Bigger Pockets, prefer investing in C-class properties because they fall somewhere in the middle. They don't cost too much to acquire or maintain. They attract decent tenants and produce a fair amount of cash flow. No strategy is wrong. It just depends on the risk, time, and the amount of headaches you're willing to deal with to get the most cash flow possible. I only invest in A and B class properties because I want higher appreciation rates and I prefer to deal with tenants who have better credit scores, higher incomes, pay on time, and since they are more likely to care about the homes and the neighborhoods that they live in, they'll likely take better care of my properties too. Look, could I make more money investing in C and D class properties? For sure. But to me, it's just not worth dealing with all the potential headaches these properties can cause, especially since almost all of my properties are out of state and self-managed. It's just not worth it for me, but it could be worth it for you. In my opinion, the biggest reason why investors quit investing in real estate is because they get tired of dealing with the many headaches that come with it. So if I can reduce the amount of headaches that I encounter, that's the route I'm going to take, even if it means losing a little bit of cash flow in the process. If you're looking for a quick and easy tool to help you compare the differences between rental properties that you're considering, I've developed a spreadsheet that I use for that sole purpose, and it helps me easily determine which properties are the better deals. So you can find that link down in the description below. For a real world example of an A-class property I purchased in Virginia, check out the video that's about to pop up on your screen now. There I discuss the details of the property, why I bought it, the renovations I did, and how I was able to generate $500 more in rent a month than my realtor estimated. It's a great example you can learn from as you grow in your own real estate journey. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more great content on business, real estate investing, land ownership, and other similar topics. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer as many as I can. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.